Awesome. So uh, how many of this topic? I know some of you are just the usuals, and so you're here every week, but I see quite a few uh, new faces, which is great, great, great now. And I think, uh, I know we've had some team meetings about this in the past, and uh, I, I've heard, I wasn't, some confusion has come through, and uh, we know we've had some change in the last couple of weeks. So uh, I'm going to make sure that by equipped to be able to navigate this time and also have resources disposal uh, to really support clients at the high. And uh, to really start off, I want to actually talk about as what I'll tell you is the biggest change change in the way that you actually operate your business. It's actually in the way that you perceive your business. It's a change in, we're going to talk about this uh, for the first couple of minutes, and then we'll dive into strategies, uh, what the actual changes mean, questions are answered. Um, if you do have questions, if you don't, and then at the end, we'll we'll dive into kind of a key here with me today. If I say anything that is off, uh, uh, I'm hiring him as my attorney and say, Shoni, you're wrong, and that's fine. I, I'm, I'm giving him permission to get a talk as an agent today, okay? I'm all the changes and uh dean if i misspeak on any of the forms feel free to chime in um i i passed around a paper if you do not have one that this please raise your hand and who has all the susie's going to help us pass these around does anybody not have one of these okay if we could pass those around to if there's any others that need them so from today you're going to get of nuggets now what i would recommend is write but also what is your action plan? We've talked about this before. Enter uh, education without implementation is not here to do. We want to go ahead and implement the things that we learn and start in our business. So make sure that on that piece of paper you write what we talk about today. Sound good? Cool. Uh, this, this conversation, I want to start with this, uh, this idea of being anti-fragile. Okay. And this was shared at the CEO summit with Gary Kelly. Help for those of you, did anybody go to the CEO summit? So if, I would love for you to feel free to chime in. Um, I'm going to just read uh, through a few of these. Anti-fragile is a concept conceived by an ASIM talent, one that is, isn't fragile. Fragile is some, anything that is easily broken or damaged. Anti-fragile is robust when exposed to stress, uncertainty, risk. Anti-fragile is the opposite. To think about in your life and in your business, how this might be, especially in this time and in our come up against industry changes or shifts in the market. How frequent does that take place? It is actually built into our ecosystem in this industry. So we have to understand that everything is always uncertainty and risk. And so we have to get behind this idea of being anti-fragile. So some things benefit when, when exposed to volatility, disorder, stress, risk. Anti-fragility is beyond Resilient, uh, resists shocks and stays. The anti-fragile gets better through those. So why does this matter? In another word, simple terms is to be tough, right? To be uh, tough times don't last, but tough people do. And so this conversation is reframe what it means for us to up-level our toughness or scale. Right, as a, as a and so tough times are guaranteed. This is why all times are guaranteed, especially in our industry. If you, you think that can happen, probably will happen. With a on the planet, a one in a million occur people every single day. Okay, so stuff happens, right? and no matter what. Rough times at the moment, sooner or later, even rougher times are going to if it's not if, it's when are deeply wo woven into the fabric of human existence, crime, divorce, unemployment, illness, addiction, because the list goes on and on. They forgot to add NAR changes on there. Um, directly or indirectly, the calamity and strike like a sledgehammer. So the reality is that tough times will happen. So when the real estate space, when 7.1 million homes are sold, numbers, so think back to 2020, 2021, who, okay, who feels like the high industry have stayed the same for the last four years in your business, right? The reality is that we've dropped, sold in the nation, okay? So when it's 4.1 million homes sold, hit your numbers, it's probably not luck. 
Okay. And uh, a big portion of that is being able to adapt, evolve. A quote by Neville, I can't pronounce his last name, but it says, as in parallel universes, you want to be wealthy. Them. So we have to factor luck out of it. Live in a way that if my life played out 1,000 success, 999 of those times. In a career of 50 years, five booms and five busts, who was here during 2008 timeline? Okay. So a lot of you have experienced some. You want to approach your life and your business in such a way that you thrive good times and bad. So you want. Here's a little uh, example. Whenever in, in life we have two options, we can either grow through it and there's still going to be some shifts that happen and we might take this little thing. We uh, grow through it and we become tougher. Or we find that some people are not tough enough. Uh, we've seen this directly with the, the brokerage as well and in, in a, as a whole of how many agents are not just because of the NAR changes, but because of the industry changes over the last two years, high rates uh, or the change them to either choose to grow or choose to step back into comfort or a different path. And so I want you to ask yourself the time because we just had a major event and you've got to decide where you want to be a months from now. Well, uh, perspective, he says, predicting rain doesn't count. It works, that does. So that, that's about what, how are you building your arc? Are you actually making a plan action? And what strategy are you going to do better than it did prior to these changes? Okay, and I want you to, uh, those who are at the CEO Summit, any, any that segment, Thanks. Um, for, for causing stress upon ourselves hmm. and looking at an area of life and what we can do, even plants in a in a green <laughs> turn fans on to blow them around. So when you take them out of the greenhouse, they don't just die because of the element. So we can either have tough, they come, or we can almost cause tough times, but in such a way that it's not going to ruin. To just spend all your money to force you to go make more, you could figure out, make more money and budget. It feels tough. You're almost faking that you're not having enough you're you're getting yourself financially love it it's really about playing at the edge of our comfort zone how many of you have ever like done a stretch and you can feel the pain right in the back of your legs or maybe and done some resistance training the reality is, is, is right and you also know where the breaking point is you could say okay, go any further than this but if you do that for by the end of the 25 days Far more increased flexibility, far less pain, right? And so we have this and, and, and grow our capabilities, but we have to be playing at the edge of that comfort zone, right? Robert, are you taking over team meeting for us? Cool. I think the thing that as well as they talked a lot about how often are we creating for our kids to be less fragile in all those areas. Like what exercises are we doing to have stress in uncontrolled environment emotionally? Like how are we challenging them and how us so that when they get to the other side, they'll, uh, they'll gain energy from what they learn. Just because I'm with Helena, I just dropped my kid. Hit that uh, ability to try to work through what that looks like, and how are we doing to to create controlled in in our emotions, our relationships, 
how create that environment and grow from it. A good opportunity to learn. Love it. Thank you, Angie. Um, for anybody who wants to dive deeper into this, this you'll on the cover, it's white and orange, and it's called and it's by the author. So his name is T A L E B. And uh, it's anti-fragile um, or that gain from disorder. Pick up and uh, obviously Gary Keller, highly, so lean into that. Um, perspective on the mindset side, and then we'll get into some strategy here. Um, I actually get to play a video after this and then we'll, we'll change is inevitable. Growth is optional. That's what I want you to use time. There are, Dean, how many? Oh, there he is, standing up. He's not in his seat. Dean, how many are in Utah? Just shut. shut. Three thousand options out there for your clients. And I take it back. What residential or real? It's about twenty-four thousand total. Cool. There's a lot of agents. What I do believe is over the next twelve months, there. If they're not willing to simply adjust some minor business on how they provide value to clients. Promise is you're gonna walk out of here in 30 minutes, fully equipped thing that you need to be dangerous in this marketplace. I have some really cool tools at your disposal. So play this video and then we will shift gears. Once upon a time, there was a who, uh, lost a horse away and, and said, that's too bad. And he, and brought seven wild horses with it. And all the neighbors came around and said, why that's good. He said, maybe. The next day, his son was a tame one of these horses and was riding it and was thrown came around in the evening and said, well, that's too bad, isn't it? And the farmer said, maybe. And the next day, the conscription officers came around looking at the son because he had a broken leg. And all the neighbors came around that evening and said, isn't that one? He said, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> the whole process of nature is a process of immense complexity. Tell whether anything that happens in it is good or bad. So what will be the consequences of a misfortune? Consequences of good fortune. What'd you catch from that short clip? <laughs> Clyde, it's the nail on the head. Things are neither good nor bad. And, and you can really look at so many different aspects of your life. Uh, you either had happened in your childhood or uh, early adolescence age years and say, man, that was such a rough experience that I went through it because of X, Y, Z, right? Oh, so this, this reminds me of that story of, really, you know, of a story about Marcus Aurelius. Thank you. Sorry. Stoicism is, uh, you know, the philosophy you're able to sort of detach yourself from the events that happen to you and or impartial like this Chinese farm. You'll be more res resilient, anti-fragile. I really like that. And another, this is um, the Roman emperor. Mark. He was, uh, you know, I guess one of the famous stories about him uh, had a, uh, a servant every day. You're just a man, right? You're just a man. That was just to keep him sort of grounded in the reality that, that you can really get uh, sort of detached from reality and you know, your head can get really big if you feel like for, you know, uh, for some or, or whatever, but ultimately sort of just realize if are outside of your control, we'll, we'll, we'll keep you grounded and being able to, to, to get through it. Awesome. Kevin. I hate to disagree with the quote, but I totally disagree with 
together for our good. Mm. And that uh, because we're animal and everything that's tough that we go through, resilient, we'll grow more through those tough times. And even in the good times, we do well, like Cam was saying, if we're doing the so I, I wholeheartedly agree with the statement, but yeah. I like yeah. it. Yeah. You know, funny thing is, I'll just, just say, um, I, I think that things that are bad, they just are what we choose them. We just say the NAR change that just happened. For some agents, it'll be the worst that happened for their, for their business. Because to accept that, that belief, right? And on the other hand, Actually, what I believe could be the best opportunity space because you choose for it to be. So, all to, to really just agree with everything that happens in life can be for an opportunity if we choose for that to be the reality. What you need to think about today is are you choosing for the NAR to be a benefit to your business and to be a or are you going to choose to make it a excuse to not? Okay, because it could be either or. Yeah, I I would actually agree with you uh, because um, if you look at something as uh, something that was bad, that happened to us subconsciously, completely bad. Mm. And if you're thinking it, hey, there's opportunity here at it as opportunity. All that's happened is, is to go out and find out how to get it again. Love it. Who's moved my cheese? Good book. Cool. Well, let's let's look at what actually changed. It's cool if we get it right into it. Okay. This because this is gonna be very helpful for you to be able to visually see changes actually happened. Okay. Home buyers. And it's going to go through all the steps throughout the home purchase process. Cameras to go down. And then this is the new way. You want to take a photo of this? Is this getting emailed out? I'll email this to you, Susie. So we're all set. What was that? Oh, sorry. I must, I mean, here's the old way. You'll notice that right. quarter change. Look, uh, that things that people think have changed have not really, they actually were things we were supposed to be doing in the, we have to be doing it. And so uh, the reality, what actually matters supporting your client in purchases or sales that might happen in their lifetime, that's what you have to lean into, right? The ultimate of being a real estate agent has not changed. Inner details, okay? And so we'll, we'll get it as they are not worse than they are. Then see them better than they make them that way. It was, it was what? Say it one more time. No. See, Yeah, and, and easy twist on it as well, right? Um, and Tony Robbins them in front of the 20,000 people that were there. Uh, and I'm sure it led to some embarrassment. But then he questioned and said, I want you to do it again. And like, why are you going to support me? And he had him reach the proposition was. And because he was thinking about them and make sure that they were taken care of through the process, uh, his value proposition changed in a brief second. Sometimes better than the first pitch that you did. So my encouragement you have not practiced your value proposition in the long You probably won't be able to execute at the highest level when you're a virtual client. So that'd be one of the things to really... The other part is your 30-minute long-form value proposition. So actually come up with what are the or a buyer's agent to support clients at the highest level and have it 
have a, an actual buyer consultation packet, the things that I do in getting you guys to the finish line. Because what you have to validate the compensation you're going to ask in the consultation, this is the second piece that has changed is to communicate the option that you, right? Help them understand the different ways to uh, pay that compensation. So option one, one, two is that the seller or the listing brokerage will pay or a combination of the two. What that actually looks like. Matt. Oh, any good templates for the buyer? Great question. Yes. Yeah, we've got some templates. The resource I'll show you in a moment that we'll be sending out. Customize. Great question. What it looks like visually. Okay, so this is the uh, directly pays the buyer's agent or buyer broker. Option two is that there's an offer of compensation. Seller through the Repsi is paying the buyer. Okay, and I'll show you what the new Repsi looks like. So it makes it very simple. And then option three. Let me right. number two is yes. The I, I got compensation. Those back. Number three, going back to two is offer of through the brokerage, okay? So broker to broker. Is you have to have a BB when? Right, so get that signed prior to showing homes. Your compensation be listed in the BBA, okay? You have BBA, you can ne negotiate down, but you cannot negotiate, meaning if you put 2%, seller is offering it or a listing brokerage is offering it. If you put, you can't take 4%, okay? So you cannot negotiate up, but you can negotiate down. So you come across a uh, listing that's only offering two, two, you can go down to two if you so choose. Does that make sense? Clear? And I'm glad that, Jack, you mentioned this. So this is something that when you're getting your BBA signed is if you know, just know that there are some builders out there that are paying 4%. In that event, you might want to think about putting 4% in the buyer broker agreement. Otherwise, you cannot that full fee. Does that make sense? Yes, Kevin. We have a buyer that has, they were looking for resale. Now they're going to have a 3% agreement with them. Can it be changed if now you see the builders are off? This one. It's going to be a hard proposition. If you try to go up, I'm not one. I'm not playing one on TV. But what I say is, did it, it, it's a prime. I'm getting your fiduciary because you made it about you. And so going to up it. So if there's a chance, they may be, look, we're going to do this. We're going to set it at four or five. And the number is, and if we need to adjust, just cannot adjust up. It would be smarter to do it to everybody. Yep. Higher. Yep. Even if my clients were going to see it, they, I didn't do it for myself, but they suggested that don't do that. It, as it, as it gets to the purpose or the intent, and four or five percent, and you're stepping down your clients. So it, the law is going to look at the intent of it. If you, you negotiate it down, quote unquote, you're making it about, as opposed to if you're going up, you're making it about. A violation of loyalty. So, way to say it. Thank you. The third thing that has changed. This is all in the buyer. Hopefully, the third thing is negotiation. So, how do you actually submit the offer? This is going to be pretty simple. So, you've got three. I'll call the easy button. This is the simplest way to do it. Is to your offer right in the Repsi, and then to pay the buyer brokerage compensation, okay? 
So uh, use the rep C and I'll show you that. That is you're having the listing brokerage pay the buyer brokerage, okay? So broker to broker, this is kind of like the new FISBO before. What is the first step that you do to your client a FISBO? Get your agreement signed. Yep, so you call them and you get an agreement signed with a FISBO, right? Saying that they're willing to pay a buyer. This is the same thing. You'd be calling the listing agent and getting their ahead of time that their brokerage is gonna pay. This, as you can see, adds an extra step in the process. That's why I personally like, number one, you could do it however you because it's the easy button. Now, this is the real estate brokerage compensation agreement. You want to become familiar with where you're asking the, or the listing broker to send that over to you, okay? So you'd ask for send that over if they are paying the compensation directly. And three, the third option is a combination. So for example, you might have in the rep C that the is paying 2% and then the additional 1%. In that case, you would have in the REPC 2% and then you'd have to have this station agreement stating the additional 1%. Those would be uh, numbers together. So it'd be a total of three, right? Two in the brokerage agreement. Yes. And I know we're uh, short on time and stuff like that, but I mean, I'm already getting that you're asking them for what they're what they've been offering. They're like, well, I'm not sure how good your offer is going to be. Mm -hmm. So they're you know to try to negotiate us in front of our clients, which is something that you know we haven't really. It's something we ought to consider because uh, you know you're, you're going to get and uh, you know you just praying from the list side. I think that's the best thing you could do as a. You said, I'd love to see your offer. It's going to be a point of, of negotiation. Straight. But if it's in the listing, they've already decided. To you're, you're, you don't have to. Okay. You rise, but you've not been instructed to. Is, go ahead. I'll give my response is simple. Hey, yes, my client BBC. It just depends on the strength of your offer. So feel, feel okay with you guys. Well, then I would, then, yes, then let them know that they're not. Yes, yeah. So you can still say, now here's here's where we'll get into a listing agent. You want to have that tough conversation with an advance around the benefits of having a buyer. So we'll go through some stuff that you can add to your listing presentation where you explain here's 13 reasons why we might and the benefits that come to us. Yes, really. Why someone would prefer to broker to broker that because they didn't discuss it beforehand or why would uh, why would that be my first answer and then i'll let dean chime in on this my first answer is they probably like we're having this meeting so you guys are fully equipped right? easy button so i don't know why i would go to number two first to make that call and do that i'm going to negotiate with my client and include it in my offer that's the route i'm going to take uh, but uh, perspective on why an agent would use number two. In this meeting, I got a text from an agent. Can I ask a listed agent what commissions are off? Yes, but be certain that the answer, let's say that's yes, and offer one. Make sure that answer to fill that property. Mm. And because if you do, you've again made it about you. You've not made it about your I love number one up top is because you hire every property here she wants to see. He sh then you write your offer asking for what you you believe you to make this work on your side. This is another term of the agreement that the seller is going to or they're going to agree to. Yeah. 
Cool. Angie. That way last week with me that totally changed my perspective. Don't don't want to know the answer because you don't. It, it changes the energy in which you do it. The energy in which we do something is more. more and you would have shown your clients all of the houses before. So why are you adding that extra step? Walk into that home with them as well. Like if you, you can then ask for 3%. If you admitted three, I'd be irritated. Just don't ask. And you the listing agents way less. I think, you know, how many calls I've gotten this week on what our commissions are. Guess what? We intend to pay 3%. So show my properties and we'll do the right thing. Nothing really changed. We get all wrapped up in that. We stop showing show the houses, write the offer, ask for 3% and you'll probably make more than you ever have. Amen. Thanks for that. It's great. Jack. We have situations in new construction where people, for instance, will say, I want to buy a new house and I want to buy it here. We love um, would the buyer go for this? Would the would the or would the seller go for or go for that? With this, and we're like submit an offer. For an example, had a buyer that had bankruptcy close prior to February of the following year, asking Edge to hold the home off market, and they said we will date of February, you know, way, and Edge rejected that proposal. But you offer X amount, long story for that home, they allowed them to close. So they offered $10,000 and were able to hold the home off months later. I mean, these sorts of things work all write an offer and ask for. for Love it. Thank you. You selling the homes? Yes, Chrissy. And seeing what, 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 what. Yeah. Thanks, Dean. Okay. He asks for 3%, but on your ERS, it only goes up to cent. And the seller to our ERS and change it to three, but I thought you couldn't go up. Does that make sense? Okay. If you look at the document right here, this is the clause from section four of the. the now, what it says is who's paying it? Seller shall contribute X amount of the. Per, you don't have to touch your reps because the seller all need if they accept this offer as written. Yes, because the seller's agreeing to pay it. It's not. Seller's paying it. It's not my brokerage. In, in, in my listing client. Susie has agreed to pay two and a half percent to two and a half percent. But when she saw the close super fast, because that's what she was looking for important to her. She says, my listing agreement, because Susie's paying it. I'm not. not. Does that make sense? <laughs> Using the payment addendum. Or, or, or she'd back and forth. Who's paying? If it's my brokerage, my broker and a half percent in this scenario that we talked about on the listing agreement. The seller agrees to pay three, four dot three of the repsy. Seller is paying it. My brokerage isn't it. My brokerage fee, and they, they're instructing title to take and pay the buyer's brokerage. Very clear. If you write your repsy, don't worry. This is Angie was talking about. Write a repsy to pay three percent if that's your number, four percent. And then if the seller 
you don't have to worry about what the listing agreement says because the seller's going to brokerage and all that. So with kind of the visual cues of this, the ERS, right, in your listing agreement have a section where you're saying, this is what my listing compensation is. You are willing to pay or offer up to compensation. So as you can see here, the seller is paid through the rep C, the buyer directly for, or, or you need a real estate, per, or excuse me, you, uh, where did it go? The broker, the listing brokerage is paying the buyer's brokerage. Same question. What? Okay, I think we're getting into the weeds again. I'm trying to go yes. more general. I had a question come up earlier. When do we need the seller payment addendum? And this that would be on an agreement that is not. That's the only document right now that has it. So when you're on a on a land on land or a commercial seller payment addendum. But otherwise, I would say use the Repsi and have the seller brokerage perspective. It is so much cleaner when the seller pays it because what have the lawsuits been about? Seller, well, if the seller signed off saying, I'm paying this, dang it, you, how can you not know this is going to pay the buyer? Didn't even come through my brokerage. It the seller directly to the buyer. So I've got a question. Okay, I'm not trying to go in the weeds, but I'm really, I really don't know this part. So if we don't ask, can I come up? Ask the listing agent, the commission, this says that it is in addition to, I put 3% 3, 3 or 4% or whatever, their thing is 2%, then it's 5%. So if I send this without knowing what they sign, so can we take, can you tell them? Into? No, so this is, you do not have an agreement with listing brokerage. Yes. Okay, let's say you're the buyer's agent. <laughs> no, you're not. So this document, the real estate brokerage agreement, if not you have, I know. I, if you have negotiated with the listing agent as the buyer, I've signed this document, okay? Condition two, what's on the rep seat. So if you add number documents, that's when they're adding them together. Yes. You have to have that. If you've not signed this document, there is no agreement on the con. It's not an addition to. It doesn't matter if they verbally or in an email or tell you, it has to be contracted between bro. Nope. Yeah. Okay. Doesn't in their ERS. It's whatever was agreed to between. How about and agents are authorized in this bro that document? Yeah. Cool. Wanting this is what you want to offer. Yes. You can use it. So as a listing agent, TRS for some reason uh, says two, and and the buyer asks for three, and the seller agrees to that. Change the ERS, but is there some uh, like an escrow instruction form? My escrow instruction. Okay. All right. That was. If the seller agrees to pay more than what they originally were thinking, of, and then do, that's the. Oh, we'll talked about this, but I'm thinking out loud here. That may be a scenario where a might also send a counter. We already have a an ERS for two, I'm going to pay an additional one, but I'm I'm already paying from the. It's going to be those in addition to. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's the way of doing it. A little messy, um, but that have a, a listing agent say we're going. The brokerage is going to pay. The seller is going to pay one, and so we're going to pay, and I the compensation agreement 
bringing it into the RepC. Yeah. Does that make sense? Complicated. Okay. It's, it's more complicated to do it that way, but you may see it do it. That's why I'm bringing it up is just understand that happens. Matt. Yes. If they're under contract. Active listings, there was an addendum that you have. Okay, I'm going to jump forward. Uh, here's what's changed on the listing AD. Almost nothing. The negotiation phase, right? So, of course, we know your our brokerage compensation is not listed on the MLS. So that's pop as far as what you're going to expect from offers coming over is probably where the changes will occur. So, number one, be where the, the buyer's brokerage is asking for your seller to pay compensation. Uh, again, this is the contacts you ahead of time as the listing agent and asks compensation directly from the brokerage or asks if you're paying one from the uh, event. They may request for you to send over the real estate brokerage payment, which is that form that we just showed. And then there be different options. Okay. Logistics that I would just think about. Uh, one is an unrepresented buyer. Um, I know that that would happen a little bit more often. And we are, uh, I'm purpose, she got a lot more stuff to go through with you guys, but we have one. If you have to leave, that's fine, but I promise you're gonna miss out on the best stuff. Wanna stay an extra 10 minutes. Um, if in the event that you have an unrepresented buyer, you might wanna think through be compensated for the extra work that goes into sell, right, as a listing agent and taking care of that unrepresented, right? Because my duty is to get the client that an unrepresented buyer, there's a lot more that you might have to do, to line, right? So think about that ahead of time. And if your listing appointment, a certain fee, whatever that is to you, if that's one and a half percent, point five percent, whatever you'd like, your listing fee if an unrepresented buyer comes with an offer. So think about that and the way an addendum for the unrepresented buyer. Hey, my fee is three. My listing fee is three. In addition to this, if there is an unrepresented buyer transaction, my additional fee is one you charge for an unrepresented buyer. And you might want to listing presentation all the things that you're gonna do, which I'll show you in a second. And then also uh, option three for an unrepresented buyer, as you know, is to refer, instead of having them, you know, fully go through unrepresented, uh, recommend their agent on the other side. So you can do either of those. Last meeting, Dean said that we have to do it backwards. Oh, sorry, I have. Not an two options, and sorry, I skipped number two. That's this is on the top line of your ERS saying I charge four four and a half, and then saying in the addendum, no more than six percent or five and a half, right? Because if it's four and a half at the top section saying this is my listing agent fee, in the buyer brokerage commission, right? How much do those numbers are? seven and a half, right? So that's will not pay more than 6%, right? I'm uh, through this as a listing agent. I would prefer to put through this and then add an addendum saying I charge an additional 1.5 in the addendum. Does that make sense? That's why you're, you're that addendum with your listing agreement, same time. Yep. So it's a condition. That, that you so that? it's a con it's conditionally yeah well, clauses so so I'll, I'll introduce you to the playbook we're not going to go because of time we're going to send this out but the goal was to say hey how can we make sure that you're equipped with resources to be successful um, and really have something so i'm not going to go through all this the two things that i'll explain to you is that we we spent a lot of time on 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 consultation, your listing appointment and your buyer uh, buyer consultation are the most important 
because what you have to do is articulate your value to your client. So just think through what your listing package, what you might want to add. So we have a lot of templates in here that are that you can literally just copy the template and add it. Okay. Uh, this would be one of them that I would include as a listing agent. Say to a seller why I would make the buyer brokerage compensation out there, right? And why it's valuable to have an agent. And uh, these. So here's one example. You, in the past, some agents had that they would offer to their clients, right? I charge four or five is how people would do it in the past. And they would say part of this is towards the buyer's agent, okay? You cannot lump that in any longer. Okay? So you have to separate these fees. And so the so fee is two and a half percent or 3% or 4% as the And here are the different things that I'm doing is feel like is the best for you. And then you might, and I recommend offering a buyer brokerage commission. More traffic equals more offers and more offers equals more money. And then by the way, I do try fee is 1.5% for unrepresented buyers. What that means is I'm going to go into explaining that. Now, the case for that one one and a half percent or whatever you're charging, right? This is all custom. These are templates that we've already created for you. You go through value proposition, what you're doing to service your clients. Here's what I do, and it does state in this top section, and really an attorney, uh, but broker, Dean, you can state, okay, my fiduciary duty is the seller. So you're going to communicate that saying, hey, not representing the buyer, but table, there's still some really important milestones they have to cross finish line. So here are the things that I can't, can't hurt my fiduciary duty to you, but make sure that they get to close. Okay. So here's the eight things that I'm doing that substantiate 80% fee that I'm charging. Right. Oh, and by the way, max paying in this case, four and a half percent. Still, uh, slightly more cost effective for them to go that route if happens. Any questions on this? So the templates are in the, so you're, you're all going to get this the agents support a great document to be able to express your value. And this goes more into the weed, all the stuff that buyers and sellers have no clue to close a transaction, right? And so uh, this is another good, you can utilize, again, customizable if you want to. Um, last thing, I'm going to share a little video. This is, if you do nothing else from today, this should be on your action. Drive.kw.com. Drive.kw.com. Training. And then you're going to click on resources on agent resources. Let's call on-demand experience for agents, okay? They're what we'll call conversational frameworks. Articulate your value in different ways to clients. And what we've done is interviewed top agents across the country to their clients about the changes or how they're expressing their value of why they're charging and so what I would do is go through in, in one, 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 five to seven minutes long. Uh, let me give you a little taste of, we're going to just watch a minute and a half of, let's do Nick. Nick's great. Nick, thank you for joining <laughs> What kind of questions are you fielding? Are... One of the biggest group of people that have the question are the agent population. I'm not, not, not consumers. Because let's be honest, 93% in the world are not buying and selling home. home. The agents are very nervous about what's coming. How are you uh, the compensation dialogue with buyers? There's a lot of money when you're buying a house and, and coming up with that big. So what we're going to do is we're trying to negotiate seller to help you and help alleviate how much money come out of pocket. 
there are going to be some big portion of that and help you out to get them, get you home. And there's going to be some other sellers that refuse that house because it's a little just too much money out of pocket for but that's my job is to guide you through understanding what home offers what and how you can get into the so you're treating it like a closing cost exactly anybody ever said well i need a loan but i'm not paying any fees i i need title work i need representation to buy the most expensive I've ever bought but I don't want to pay anything for that. Is that we are representing them and doing a job service, and that job or service deserve. You should clap for that last statement, right? Reality is, we should not shy away from what we're asking. As long as there's equal this idea that. Price or fees only matter in the end. So if you're not very clear on how you, your goal is just, hey, I'm going to find a home, text it to you, and then when I'm an offer, that's what I'll do, and that's it. That's the extent. There might be some buyers who are not happy with paying a certain fee. But if you're a full service agent and you're saying this is exact, make sure that you guys have the best experience possible when, when buying a new home, substantiate that value that you're asking for. Okay got lunch in the back, but I want to just get three to four ahas. If you have any questions, I'm willing to stick around. I'm sure Dean is, as you guys have, but was this a little bit more clarifying today for how to, cool. So what are your ahas? Don't ask, just want. Easy button. Do you feel like as do you feel like as the listing eighty, you are forthright with a compensation, you lose leverage? You? I would say, and I know uh, the reality is that you're having that conversation with us on expressing the value of having a buyer's. So my thought is, well, why flip flop just because the buyer asking for it, right? If you've really explained the value up front. I still am going to hold my cards close and potentially use that as an art because I don't know what kind of offer they're going to send up. A substantially low offer, but of course, my seller is not, probably not going to be open to compensation, right, in full. And so, uh, and, and just approach it with saying, hey, my client is willing to pay a buyer compensation, uh, dependent on the, on the strength of the we're happy to look at it. That's how I'm going to approach it. Any other ahas or Ashton? Can we call it a concession? Your seller does want to pay. Offer that to a buyer's agent. Can we just call it a con? Can still advertise like, hey, hey, this they're gonna offer a three percent con concession. Your buyer's closing costs, like, is that concessions on the MLS? You want to be, if I understand, Brad was saying, Brad Belkey from the MLS, every listing going to put that the seller's waiting to action for the buyer's brokerage comp, or that that's going to be an issue over time. Was that my understanding? Or the correct yeah, understanding the being? sellers can offer concessions. Less, but you may not say, and these concessions you can use by your agent. You know, it's like, uh, -uh. yes, that's. But I want to be really specific. You want that. You don't want it to be paid to the buyer, and then the buyer has to buyer's brokerage because the got a check for fifteen thousand dollars. I I see pouches in my feet. You know. Yeah. Which again is important. It does state that title can withhold those fees. So the buyer's not paying title will we'll take care of it. So I don't know. I can't tell you with this. This is so today, or if it was 
Pastor Corey's got something. Just going to add to kind of what's been said about uh -huh. the amount of compensation that's offered. Uh, stills on the other side in the corporate world and other things like this real estate world that you guys are just offering up information to the thing, you know, giving away your position. My listing sides or any business deals I do, I don't go out and pay this, that, you know, and it's like I've lost a big chunk of it. Yeah. So expect that coming forward because I've heard it in other brokerages in this company. We'll see what your deal is and da 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 da, because in in the commercial world you don't know anything. Yeah. So we just expect that as a change, not as an insult, answer, because it, it's going to happen a lot more. The legal side of this, but I will talk from a strategy perspective. How many of you, as a listing agent, know their BBA as far as compensation goes? No. Right? So the buyer broker agent fee or 2%, right? So the part is that when you hold your cards and put what's on their BBA, they, ha they have to, right? Or uh, just for that point, our job is to get them the can if we're giving up info. Yep. No matter what the information is. Yeah. Anything you want to add to that, Dean? Enough. Okay. <laughs> Awesome. So if it's a builder and they have their own part in there for the question. If there's no if there's nothing in the addresses commission, I would have a handy dandy of the seller's payment addendum about this and they will have a compensation document. Unless it's Angie's and no, I'm just teasing. Angie's there. So Angie had somebody ask for two and a half as a builder. Hey, three. Wow. No, they asked for two and a half. You were willing to pay it. <laughs> we're coming on a good time if this were because we're not a strong seller's market right now. So we're shifting. Things are. I don't know about you, but my listing. Yeah, they asked for going to offer two. She asked for two and a half. Of the 0.5 or whatever. But then we rewrote a clean offer at the 2.5. Would I have get, get probably we've been sitting for three months. So we're we're not a we're not a seller's market. Get power right now. I mean, that's my opinion on some houses that they go fast. It's a weird market. Some houses are, 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 are sitting for months. So are you going to give, you know, power in it? Cool. Awesome. Okay. Well, we'll, see. it'll have all the resources in it. Uh, probably give us a button and up in there, uh, but use it to your advantage. Go watch these videos. I promise going to equip you with the right things of exactly different scenarios. Hey, you guys, you got to give it up for Shoney to put it together. This It is really an awesome document. Great. Okay. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy lunch.